Hey guys, uh, it's Tony here at McMahon Alternators again, and uh, just had a good conversation with a customer uh, via email. Uh, went very well, uh, very uh, easy to communicate with him, but uh, it, it did remind me of the fact that um, many people do not understand alternators as well as that customer did. So I thought, what a good time to make a good, uh, good little video on what we call uh, custom clocking on an alternator. And you may have heard that term before, clocking an alternator. Um, in short, it just means you're uh, moving the alternator around to meet your needs. Um, that, that a part number we have does not uh, either uh, give you the clearance you need or some kind of spacing. And this doesn't relate to like a pulley spacing. This is more along the lines of actual um, changing the dimensions of the alternator. Uh, whereas a pulley, you're just spacing in and out, um, you know, for alignment issues. So let's talk first. Um, this here, uh, always uh, keep your nuts tight. Um, obviously, there's no guts in this alternator. It's open. But this right here is our popular, you know, it'll fit 96 to 2018, 1920, um, Silverados, Tahoes, you know, the whole, what we, you can make a 400 amp all out of this, uh, you know, anywhere from two, 250 up to 400. So, so in this configuration, we have a four pin regulator, which is pretty standard on all the big boy uh, 300 amp large case ups. Um, the output stud is at the back. So this would be your 1996 to 2013 uh, application. So this would go right in. You have your on the back, your regulator. It's good to go. This is pretty standard. This is how they're built. Um, and you know you can fit, I think even the Camaros are this way. But anyway, say uh, you're trying to do some custom application or a motor swap. So you have some like different valve covers or you have a different bracket or you have a roll bar or cage tubing, you know, front half car, uh, something like that. <clears throat> and you need, um, you know, for whatever reason, you don't have any clearance here uh, because your mount has it this way. And, you know, it's just all those little things that add up. So what we can do on these, um, you could buy a 2014 up alternator that has the output stud on the top or um, you know if you let us know depending on you know, which one it is we can change that for you here we just need to know um, this customer I had was just uh, very good with uh, pictures and detail and measurements and uh, spoiled me a little bit but uh, we'll go through what we kind of did with that guy Uh, generally, you'll have four bolts that hold your alternator together, uh, the two halves. So, uh, take everything apart here. That way we can move it around as we see fit. This is the regulator uh, out of my 2008 uh, Silverado. Uh, we've tested it, beat on it, tried weird things with it, and uh, tried to mess it up, and uh, we can't. Uh, but we've got a different one in there now, testing it, um, just trying to beat it up, see if we can break it. And uh, I just had this one <clears throat> laying around, figured, nah, why not? Same goes for the regulator. Uh, it's still here because it's still soldered in. Um, we were using this, so anyway. So say you need the output stud in a different location. So before we built it, or if we'd already built it before, unsolder it and move it, you can see it's a pressed in stud. So you've got a pressed in stud on the back. Well, there's a spot on the top. These uh, rectifiers we use, uh, they come with the hole already there. So um, you would take your collar nut, or we would take the collar nut, and this is a pressed in stud. It has to be pressed out. Um, it has to be done right. You have to have the right spacing and whatnot so you don't break the rectifier. 
So that comes out. Uh, go back in the top. Collar nut or washer collar nut back on. And there you have it. Now it's on the top. And it only goes on one way here. We'll get to that in a minute. Once I figure out how to not make this work on camera. Because it's a very precise fit. There we go. Cool. So now, <clears throat> now we have a 2014 up uh, Silverado, Tahoe, Suburban, whatnot, where it comes out the top, clears everything. Okay, cool. So you have that. Well, for whatever reason, it's mounted this way in the vehicle or you know, so-and-so, and now you have a turbo pipe that hits it. Well, these, when this is a part, I don't need the front case for this. This rear case, you have these three bolts that hold it on. Now, this cannot move. Whenever this assembly here moves, this case will move with it. So you can't clock just this. It has to be the whole, um, whole case. And there's four bolts. So when you move this, so you're looking at it like this. This is the way it's normally built. If we need to clock this a different way, we only have uh, three other choices. So you have this one. You could have it here. Where the output studs on the side over here. You could have it this way, which this would be really weird to have the output stud on the bottom. I don't know of anything like that. I mean, that's crazy, but you never know. It could be mounted, you know, like that. So, and then the last, you could have it to where it's here. And, th and this is a popular, popular one because a lot of people will mount it here and they want this on top. So if your mount's this way, this is on top, you're good to go. And same, you know, you can put your stud on the back if you need it. So, um, you know, so there's that. Um, but it's very easy. You can see this is round. There's no mounts or anything on it. It's all done on the front. So as long as it's like this, we can flip this thing around any way you want in those four positions. So, you know, you can go from, go from stock, modified, modified to the down, and then modified that way. So very versatile. That, that's why a lot of these are used in uh, dual bracket kits and universal. Um, they, they can be moved around a lot. So with that said, let's go ahead and move to one that's more complicated and one that we've unfortunately had to, you know, have to deal with. This right here is, uh, this is one off your Ford, uh, this is an old SEMA display here. Um, this is a Ford, uh, you know, Coyote, EcoBoost, uh, Godzilla, um, you know, uh, that type. They're both, these are both large case alternators. So, you know, we can get, you know, 400 out of these to, you know, 240, 50, bottom, whatever. But, you know, the front is, pretty similar to the to the GM one but when this is locked in you know I was talking about the uh, four uh, four different um, regulator spots let's see make it make this one about the same okay so a little bit better so there you go now we can still on this one you can still move uh, this output stud to the back. That's no problem, that, 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 that's easy. Where we run into the problem on some of these um, is the clocking. You, in, in short, you cannot clock this alternator because it looks similar to this one, except for this on the back. This is the problem. You have a mounting location on the rear um, part of the alternator and when you move all of this it moves your mount so it kind of messes you up for everything because you can see it lines up factory lines up perfect but 
when you try to move it around, it just, it's one of those things where you might be able to make it fit, but it really needs that solid mount right there. Um, because these things have a lot of force. I mean, you know, maybe if this thing was like a, you know, stop 100 amp or whatever it is, you might could get away with it with minimal flexing. But when you try to move this one, you can see it just throws the, like say this one, you got a mount hanging on the top of it and there's nothing on the front. Uh, that's a threaded uh, collar there. So there's not, there's not anything you can do with this. Um, you're really limited to really just output stud location. So you have to watch on, on some applications where uh, the rear has a mounting uh, foot or um, boss there, something that it needs. Um, you can't, you can't clock it. I'm sorry. Um, you want to cut that off, then you're you're destroying the integrity of the mount of the alternator. We don't recommend it, and we won't. We simply won't do it. Um, so that's whenever we talk about clocking, that's what we're talking about. And always with me, um, when I'm speaking with the customer, and we're talking about clocking, I will always ask for pictures because. If you send me a picture, that gives me a receipt that that is exactly what we talked about. And I can reference that uh, in the build sheet and I can keep that, you know, so if you get this alternator and it doesn't fit or it hits something, um, you know, it's, you know, we're adults. Um, sometimes mistakes happen and, uh, you know, you may need it clocked in a different way that you thought you did. And, uh, you know, it's just a, it's just a receipt. It's not, there's no, he said, she said, they sold me this, they didn't do this. Um, I do it right the first time and the last time. Um, I don't I don't like to get into a uh, back and forth shipping thing. It, just, it, it pisses everybody off. It's better to be completely upfront and get it done right from the get go. And again, mistakes happen, but you fix it and you move on. So, Whenever we're speaking clocking, I'm just going to use the front part here. Whenever I'm talking with you about clocking, I am looking straight ahead at the alternator like this. Um, now, some alternators have some weird mounts and whatnot, um, but generally I'm looking at the alternator as if it were sitting on a table with the pulley pointed at you in the most stable position. That it can be in so with this I would ask you know looking at the alternator where does that stud need to be you know where does the output or where does the connection of the regulator need to be so you have your obviously up here would be your 12 o'clock right here and then looking at you guys it would go uh, your 12 and then your you know, um, three, six, and um, nine over here. So that will, you know, that kind of gets you in the area. And uh, and I've had that, you know, don't be afraid to send me a picture from your phone with a drawing of an alternator, you know, showing where the uh, output stud is. I, I really don't care what the drawing looks like. It just has to look like an alternator with mounting feet pulley at the front and where you need that stud to be. Um, looking at the back of it, um, we could take the side profile of it and that way you could show me if it's coming out the back or the top. Uh, it doesn't really matter that way because all I'm really concerned about is, you know, which way it's going. So, um, but the crucial part is just the, the front here. That way, you know, if I see the stud, I know it's a coming out the side that we call it, which might be the top. Um, and I know what clock that it is. But, uh, you know, once you get that stuff figured out, um, and, it, and if, you're, if your project's not complete, uh, let's say you don't have your roll cage completely done, 
uh, you may want to hold off on an alternator because you may need to redo the tubing that comes over the top of it. <clears throat> or you might need to change the one of the bottom links on the off-road rig to clear a low mount alternator. You just never know. It's just best to get all of your must must do stuff done and then we'll we'll work around the uh, the alternator area. So all right guys um, probably not the most uh, flashy or exciting video but uh, this will be good for uh, when someone asks for clocking or maybe you have something particular you're working on and you know, maybe something you you don't think is out there that can be done uh, just give us a, give us a call uh, email Tony at MacMan.com uh, toll free number I don't have it with me it's a 188 number um, it, it, all of our contact is on the uh, on our website um, same thing through messenger uh, you can send me pictures through messenger um, I'm really pretty easily uh, attainable on the weekends uh, I do a lot of tech over the over the internet uh, help um, the only thing I can't really answer is what we have in stock because I'm not here on the weekend but uh, anything like that uh, feel free to to call us here email and we can figure this stuff out it's not that hard because you only have I mean you can only do what you can do so you know your four positions um, you know a different regulator maybe a different regulator location output stud uh, spacing um, there, not a lot we don't get a lot of that but when you do get them it's it's good to be extremely precise and do it right the first time with the most information up front because you start sending it back and forth or we take the alternator apart and back um, it's just frustrating and time consuming and um, you know and we only do this with our McMahon alternators um, you can't send us your junkyard buy or whatever it is or someone else's alternator we don't want that headache we don't know what's wrong with it we don't know how it's been used um, it's been tried in the past and some of the parts these people use in this stuff is absolutely horrible I can't even imagine um, so we only do this with our mechman alternators um, and you know you just have to be up front with us let us know your needs or if you have a concern about it send us a picture and we have tech drawings on the website with part numbers uh, you know your 8206 uh, part number like this um, you know five and a half inches and you know all the dimensions around it stud and you know if you're always if you're unsure of that just always just call or email uh, we'll be happy to help um, I mean in some cases we've even uh, sold just a front case um, for an alternator and let the customer test fit it on there uh, obviously we charge you for the uh, for the uh, for the case like this um, you can send it back to us and we'll build uh, build the alternator the way that you figured out to work best for you and uh, we'll get you going as soon as we can so um, and the last thing if you if you're concerned about fitment don't get a custom painted alternator we do not take returns on custom painted or modified parts so if you've had it painted banana yellow and you've tried to modify it yourself to make it fit nope you own it it's just how it is uh, there's nothing we can do with it um, many applications are unique and we take it apart you know it's probably got some scratches and whatnot on it here um, it is what it is um, it's better to do your due diligence up front spec it right do it right and then you ship it right and you should be good to go so all right guys it's tony at mcmahon dot alternators tony at mcmahon.com yeah tony at mcmahon.com email or on uh, social media, Facebook, Instagram, all the good stuff. I'm not on TikTok because I don't like TikTok. So, uh, thanks guys. If you have any questions, just let us know. We're here. See ya.